The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another Lunch and Learn in our ongoing Financial Friday series. Thaneys is excited to offer these sessions in cooperation with our corporate partner, AXA Equitable. AXA Equitable has a long-standing presence in New York, and a large portion of AXA Equitable's New York client base is built upon the work they do within the public education system. Through AXA Equitable, Saney's members can receive competitive insurance rates and a full array of retirement services, including a complimentary financial profile for Saney's members, which we urge you to take advantage of. This is a great benefit. Our AXA Equitable presenter today is Nick Savitz, Vice President of the East Region. Before we get started, please note that participants are muted during the session, but we'll have some question and answer time following the presentation. If you have a question, just type it within your control panel. We're also recording the session and it'll soon be available at sanies.org and I'll email all registrants with a recording link as well. With that, I'll turn the presentation over to Nick. Okay, thanks, Annika. I really appreciate it. Hope everyone is doing well out there, uh, first and foremost, um, and staying safe um, just amid the situation that we're all going through. Um, you know, it's uh, obviously unprecedented circumstances, and, um, you know, I think, uh, you know, everyone's making the most and trying to get through this. So just my, you know, just want to make sure, uh, let everyone know that, um, you know, hopefully they're staying safe and, and whatnot. And, um, today I wanted to spend a little bit more time <clears throat> today talking about a few uh, key areas that I think are interesting to think about as we start to look at, you know, dealing with a family and starting to plan for your financial future at the same time. You know, there's, it's sometimes a juggling act. So today, you know, just there's just a few key areas that I wanted to address um, as as this is an issue that we see a lot with our clients and people that we work with. And, you know, just, you know, life is, there's a lot going on in people's lives. And, you know, many times we see, um, you know, with everything going on between getting the kids to, you know, baseball practice and, you know, driving them around to their ballet recital and all these different different things and, you know, everything that people have going on with their work. And, you know, obviously everyone's very busy. Um, you know, a lot of times we see people's uh, financial planning and their situations kind of get knocked down on the priority chain, not by any fault of their own, just because if there's a lot going on. So um, what I really wanted to talk about how, how we would, you know, how you can address some of those situations and, and still make sure that you're balancing your financial goals with your family's needs as well. So today, um, again, the first area is just that balancing act, you know, juggling some of those oblig obligations and goals um, that you might have out there. Um, you know, that's one of the first things I wanted to talk about. Um, you know, really one of the first consideration is the protection out there. I can spelled out in the event of unforeseen circumstances. Um, you know, the importance of a will being one of those. Um, you know, raising a family, you know, obviously among the ongoing financial issues, just even just considerations as simple as cash management, you know, money coming in in the form of income, money going out in the form of debt, you know, in the form of expenses, you know, how to understand debt. You know, people, you know, have have debt out there, whether it's a mortgage payment, whether it's a credit card, maybe it's student loans, you know, so understanding how to manage, you know, obviously living for today, paying your day to day, your month to month expenses, and, you know, dealing with, uh, you know, debt that could be larger in nature. Um, you know, college planning, that's another area that we get questions on a lot. And is a big goal for families out there is how to how do I save for or plan for my son or daughter's college education, whether it's, you know, whether your goal is to you know, fund maybe, you know, all of it, if you're fortunate enough to be able to do that uh, portion of it, or, you know, understand what are some, you know, you know, if you're going to have to take out loans or need seeking financial aid, how does that uh, work into the equation? And then uh, obviously the long-term future, um, which is going to be different for everybody, but, you know, thinking about retirement and understanding, uh, you know, what the future might hold and, and basic retirement strategies and ways to look at the future. Um, you know, everyone here on the on the line today is 
uh, you know, obviously involved within the public school sector. So, you know, the pension planning, you know, in conjunction with, you know, different retirement accounts and investments and, you know, considering Social Security, just different ways to start to think about uh, what the future holds. So the balancing act, I think it's important to uh, start with, uh, you know, realizing that, um, you know, there, there is a lot going on and it doesn't have to be uh, very complicated to, uh, you know, even get things more onto, onto the right track or just have a sense of control over everything that's going on in your life. A lot of times I, we, we talk to folks and they, and it can be a very overwhelming situation, um, you know, because they feel like they, you know, they, they have, they have kids and they have jobs, you know, uh, both, you know, both spouses are working in a lot of cases these days. And, um, you know, it's very, you know, it, there, there seems to be a lot going on and, you know, there are really a couple things that we can do just to make sure that, you know, those, uh, your, your financial situation, um, you know, can keep you focused. So I think number one, it starts with having a plan. I know that sounds very basic, um, but some of the advantages, as we can see there, you know, keeps you focused. You know, if you have a plan, you know, we start to lay out a, a couple of uh, game plans and objectives that, that can keep, give people a track to run on and, you know, provide check marks and, um, you know, reach different well, plateaus and, and, you know, goals in terms of maybe it's paying off debt or saving even a certain amount in your savings account. You know, these things can feel really good to set out a goal and, you know, be able to go out there and accomplish that. Um, and plus, you know, providing some more organization more than anything else. Even going through a very simple budgeting process can bring a tremendous sense of relief in terms of understanding just where all, you know, your money's going, right? Because I know, you know, just personally speaking, you know, a lot of times I'll ask people, hey, how much are your monthly expenses? And, you know, people start rattling off, well, my mortgage is X and, you know, my student loans, and this is what childcare costs. And, you know, a lot of times there's those fixed expenses, but we don't realize some of where some of the ancillary expenses are coming from as well. Uh, that could change month to month. Um, you know, whether it's, you know, you know, hockey practice for my kids or traveling to an AAU game or, uh, you know, going different places, um, you know, in those, in those expenses too. So just getting a little bit of a better sense of that all starts with really just, you know, having more of a game plan. Um, but really the first step, if we look at a financial situation, um, you know, I know a lot of times it's very, uh, you know, a lot of times we start with the, well, you know, how much do I need to save, right? If we're, if we're looking at, you know, well, what's retirement look like? That's what most people say, I would say overall, you know, most people's primary concern is, well, retirement planning. Well, a lot of circumstances, um, you know, many times the the situation of asking some of the tough questions, but questions that we do need to address just because, you know, unfortunately things some, sometimes happen that are unforeseen. Um, and, you know, really for people, the ability for themselves to generate income and provide for their family and being there as a caretaker and those types of um, activities are really uh, some of the most valuable aspects uh, that they'll, they'll, they'll bring to their financial situation and taking steps to make sure that, you know, in the event that something changed, you know, would the household be able to remain the same from a financial standpoint? Um, so some of those, you know, obviously tough and could be uncomfortable questions, uh, but ones that are important to address, I think first and foremost, um, you know, what would happen to something with, what would happen to my spouse and my kids if something happened to me? Um, you know, would they be able to still maintain and pay the mortgage? You know, would they be able to still, you know, go to hockey practice? Would they still be able to go to Girl Scouts? Um, you know, would all those things still be able to be happening? Um, would they still be able to go to the college of their choice or if that was something that was a goal? Um, you know, just understanding the income that's coming in of that specific spouse. Um, you know, daycare, paying the mortgage, the monthly bills, as we discussed. <clears throat> You know, if you knew you could protect them from foreseen or unforeseen circumstances, would you do it? You know, there are some actually some really simple ways to be able to go about, you know, putting some things in place that actually can protect against all these circumstances from happening, um, you know, and adversely affecting financial situation. So planning for the unexpected, um, you know, it's, you know, the cornerstone really of a sound financial program 
is really starting with the insurance and um, you know, the insurance is protecting against risks that, uh, that uh, happen out there. So, you know, obviously there's some common ones that everyone has and has to have, you know, in the form of health insurance, you know, if something happens to your health, you know, there's insurance there. If you need to go to the doctor to help offset some of those costs, um, you know, everyone's mandated to have car insurance. You know, if you have if some, if you get in an accident, whether it's your fault or not your fault, you know, there is insurance there in case something happens. Um, property and casualty, like home insurance, uh, liability protection. You know, these are all just types of insurance that are important to a well-rounded financial plan. And then moving into the income protection, uh, which is where life insurance would come into play. There's a lot of different types of life insurance. It does not have to be expensive by any stretch of the imagination, um, but that's going to be an opportunity to protect against something happening and, you know, someone replacing an income. Um, you know, if, if there's two spouses who are both making $60,000 a year as an example, you know, if something happened to one spouse, that's half the income no longer coming to the household. So life insurance is a way that can protect against that loss. And of course, perhaps pay off a debt so the surviving spouse doesn't have to have that as a burden. Um, disability income, same thing. Um, just in a obviously the risk of getting hurt and not being able to earn income for, for yourself. Um, you know, you are far more likely to get hurt than obviously pass away. Um, so, you know, disability insurance, um, even if you're out for a, a few months or something that prevents you from uh, maybe doing your, your day-to-day -day duties that you could have in the past, or if you were first forced to go part-time and, you know, that $60,000 income that you're used to is now you're only able to generate 30000 because of lost time due to a disability. Um, you know, there is, there's ways that you can offset and, and, and uh, you know, generate that income back for your family. And then one that I think is gaining um, a little bit more concern as time goes on, and a one that I know we get a lot of questions about um, just because of the, the, the rise in is costs um, in long-term care and nursing home facilities. Um, you know, making sure that, you know, having a plan to address those because those, uh, you know, nursing homes and even assisted living and um, caring for loved ones who might be in those situations in the future um, could be very much a, a financial burden towards, towards families as well. So again, we've talked about some of this, but protecting your single most valuable asset, which is your ability to generate income. Um, you know, we've, and, you know, we insure most, most, you know, a lot of things out there in life, like our cars and our homes. Um, but do we actually look at about insuring ourselves? Disability, we talked a little bit about the statistics. Um, you are far more likely to get hurt than, um, than uh, you know, pass away. You know, roughly about 25% of people who are, are 20 years old today will become disabled at some point or miss work due an extended period of time due to a, a disability before they retire. Uh, something that I think does get overlooked a lot, um, but we always want to make sure that we are, uh, you know, asking our clients about is a will. Um, you know, the, and I'm just going to have all of these checked here. So um, what a will does is give you control and allows you to take ownership of um, who might be the guardian uh, to your kids if something happened when they were still dependents or if you have an estate or have uh, money that's left over um, after you pass away, you can have control over where that goes, whether it's a, you know, to a charity, um, you know, we can establish trusts, you know, designate minor, uh, again, gardens for minor children. That's really what a will does. Um, if you don't have that in place when something, well, when you do pass away, um, you are then beholden to the New York State probate laws. Um, which have certain guidelines that they have to follow in terms of, you know, maybe determining where assets go or determine who guardians are of minor children. Um, uh, it's a long and arduous process. You know, unfortunately, when you're sometimes dealing with the, with the court system in the state, um, that's something that will take a long time, number one, and, you know, the loss control in terms of, um, you know, where some of those assets might go or, or who could be looking after uh, your children. And, you know, will you know, there's a lot of uh, tax issues, too, which I won't spend a lot of time on at this point. Um, but, you know, you know, having a will in conjunction with a, a, an estate plan, um, you know, can alleviate and, you know, there's different ways to help with taxes as well. 
So the second issue, obviously now we're, you know, maybe we're raising a family and going through, um, you know, some considerations as it relates to financials. Um, you know, it always starts with cash management. Again, these, these concepts might seem very basic, but, um, you know, it begins with just an assessment really of, you know, your income, not only what your gross income looks like, um, but what do you actually live on? You know, what do you live on after taxes? What does your lifestyle look like? Um, you know, understanding what you're taking home, understanding what expenses, where they're going out and maybe what types of expenses you have out there. Um, you know, obviously a lot of people have debt. Um, you know, another issue that we'll talk about here in a minute is uh, rainy day funds or emergency funds. So the kiss of debt. So, um, you know, debt can be something that um, can obviously, you know, have a, have a big impact on someone's ability, you know, maybe even just to save for themselves, um, you know, maintain control of their cash flow. Um, you know, so just, a, uh, just some math here, um, you know, credit cards, you know, are becoming, I think, more and more of a, a problem in, in society today. Um, but, you know, there's obviously a lot of benefits to them as well in terms of some of the points and rewards you can earn with them. So there's tremendous advantages to using that. But obviously, like everything else, you know, it, it's important to be responsible. And, and number one, don't spend money that you don't have. Um, so for an average credit card balance of $3,000, at a 12% rate, uh, many cards are actually above and beyond that 12% rate. But you know, hypothetically, if you paid the minimum on that, $50, you know, it would take 92 payments, almost seven, almost eight years to pay that off. Um, and the interest alone is over half of what the um, balance is of that original. So you, you end up paying, um, you know, 150% more, um, or 50% more than. Uh, you know, what the total initial interest or the total balance of $3,000 was, which not a lot of people take the time sometimes to actually look at that and say, well, I know that $50 payment is low and what I can, I can manage that today, but they don't actually look sometimes at the impact of what it's going to have in terms of total cost over the long haul. So some really, you know, easy steps to just decrease the debt. Um, you know, number one, I think we have to stop the bleeding, right? So just, you know, even if we just stop using the credit cards for a period of time and maybe use a debit card or pay for things in cash, um, which I understand is tough to do, but sometimes that's what it takes to actually stop, uh, you know, from the debt from increasing uh, because sometimes feel, people start to feel like they're in a snowball effect where, you know, they're paying and they feel like they're getting ahead, but then, you know, the charges keep going on. So, you know, it really starts with a commitment to paying more than the minimum each month um, and, you know, if we do find ourselves in a situation where there is a, uh, there are some credit cards out there, uh, maybe one or multiple, you know, just in terms of some great strategies to look at um, that will save you money over time. Um, you know, really easy one to look at is the interest rates. You know, if there's, if there's two cards out there, um, one has that 12% rate, the other has a 15. Well, if we start by paying more to the one with the highest interest rate, you know, if you actually did the math and looked at that over the long haul, uh, that is, that's going to save you more money and in interest. Uh, you'll you'll pay less. Um, you know there are opportunities out there. Uh, there's a lot of cards out there today that offer zero percent for a specific period of time. One thing you do have to be aware of is some of those do have balance transfer fees. Um, you know that might take a percentage or uh, right off the top, but you know those can be very helpful in terms of stopping the bleeding in some ways and and create allow us to establish more of a realistic budget and you know, create a plan to be able to uh, address those in a, in a timely manner. Rainy day funds, um, you know, obviously there's always things that pop up in life, um, especially when there's kids around, right? You know, something breaks, uh, you know, they need to have something, need to buy something for sports or, or whatever the case may be. So um, it, it's always very important to have uh, what we'll call just an emergency fund. So a really good guideline to adhere to is, and by the way, this could be just money in a savings account. It doesn't have to be an investment by any means. I, I think it's better to be in a savings account actually. Um, but basically three to six months of expenses. You know, if you look at what your mortgage, your healthcare costs, basic groceries, utilities, um, you know, add those up for the month, multiply it at least by three. Um, and that's going to give you a sense of maybe what should be just in a savings account. Uh, money that you can access in case something happens. 
college funding as well. Um, you know, for people who have college funding as a goal of theirs, um, cost of college is currently uh, rising at a at a very rapid rate, um, out even outpacing inflation. Um, you know, and going at a at a rate beyond that. So it's becoming harder and harder for uh, families to uh, you know save for you know education. You know, which gives the opportunity to uh, you know for there's obviously scholarships and grant programs out there. There's different loans. Um, there's just some statistics out there in terms of some of the uh, the grants that were given. Um, by the Department of Education and some of the loans out there. Um, you know, the average student is graduating with about 30 grand in, in debt, and that was as of uh, 2018. Uh, so, so just some quick tips for uh, planning for college. Um, you know, if you're gonna, you know, there's a number of ways to save for college. Um, you know, a lot of people start just putting money in savings accounts. Um, you know, just look for ones that might be a little bit more tax advantages and having higher interest. We'll talk about a couple options here in a minute. Um, you know, obviously there's scholarships. You know, we, we'd love to have them if they're there, but sometimes we can't necessarily count on them um, because there's some uncertainty. Um, you know, there are certain grant programs out there, you know, in conjunction with uh, like a FAFSA form or financial aid uh, that could be available. And then certainly there's always the option to, uh, to take student loans. So in terms of what we can do to help plan for college, uh, some items that we do have some control over is, you know, our savings. So um, there's many different accounts here, um, trust-based accounts, which is what a UGMA and a UTMA are. Uh, those allow minors to actually own securities. So some people are concerned about their, uh, their children actually taking ownership and really being able to use uh, the money for whatever they want. Again, the advantage to that is it's not necessarily geared for college, uh, which some people do like. Uh, Coverdell Education Savings Account um, are tax advantage investments that you don't see too much often anymore. Uh, most people are using, um, you know, if they're going to look to plans that are specific for college, they're going to use what's called a 529 plan, um, which do offer actually tremendous tax benefits. You can get a deduction for the amount you're contributing, as well as being able to use the funds tax-free for qualified higher education expenses in the future. So the last phase here I want to talk about um, is, uh, you know, planning for the long term. So, you know, we've, we've now we've addressed really what the uh, first step is, is being able to provide protection in case something unexpected happens. You know, once we've gotten that taken care of, you know, looking at building an emergency fund, taking care of our cash flow in and out, and maybe understanding what our debt situation looks like. And now I think really is a great opportunity to start to look towards the long term. Um, you know, to start to save for retirement, start to uh, establish goals and develop uh, a program to meet them. So, you know, getting started can be can be challenging. Um, you know, a lot of people will, uh, you know, these are, these are quotes just from from clients that we've heard over the years. Um, you know, as a reason why you know, we've seen people maybe delay starting to save. Um, you know, the amount I have to invest is too small to make a difference. Um, that's actually not necessarily the case. Um, you know, time is probably our best friend as it relates to long-term saving. Even if you were saving a small amount of money, uh, you'd be amazed at how much it can grow over time with compounding interest. Um, and it actually, you'll come out ahead if you start small, just do it for a longer period of time versus people who wait and then try and make up the gap and save aggressively later. Uh, you know, believe it or not, you actually come out further ahead by starting sooner, even with a smaller amount. Um, you know, I have, a, I have a child on the way and there are other things that are pressing right now. Again, completely understandable. Um, that's something that we hear a lot. And, you know, I just like to keep my money in a savings account. Um, you know, there are certain, you know, considerations with savings accounts. Obviously, the money is very secure, but um, anyway, we have, ac we have access to it. However, you know, I know we mentioned inflation before. Inflation historically is around 3%, just means the costs of things rise. You know, so if you go to the grocery store, Next year, you go to Wegmans or whatever grocery store you shop out. I'm, I'm out here in Rochester, so Wegmans is the, is the place that, that my wife and I go. Um, you know, the loaf of bread is going to be 3% more expensive next year. So it takes a little bit more money to buy the same uh, goods and services, um, which unfortunately savings accounts just don't generate as much interest to be able to, do, to, be able to keep up all the time. Um, Long-term future. Um, so, you know, as we go into starting to save and invest, 
you know, uh, you know, risk becomes something that is an important part of the conversation um, in terms of understanding that, you know, your investments may fluctuate in value. So one of the first things we'll want to do is understand where you fall along a scale of, you know, I'll usually use a one to 10 scale and say, well, are you a one? Are you a one more risk averse? Somewhere in the middle, or are you more of a risk taker? Um, and there's certainly just an opportunity to understand that. So a couple of things to keep in mind, um, you know, when you're managing investment risk, you always want to look at what your portfolio, how it's actually set up. We see a lot of, especially given an environment that we're going through right now, where there's, you know, there's been extreme declines in the markets recently, and um, you know, we're seeing people who have losses in their accounts. Um, a lot of those can be exacerbated if you have too many, uh, too much of your money concentrated in one area, like a certain type of stock or certain area, like just like large companies. Um, so we want to make sure that we're diversifying that out and actually hedging a lot of that risk and taking steps to, you know, as we see some of the markets go down today, you know, although, you know, we still would incur losses per se in our account, um, but you know, we can get a situation where we're not down as much, which makes it a lot easier to recover. And that's going to be some of the approaches that we're going to want to use to kind of weather through some of the storms that we see. Um, the 403B, um, so that's a uh, one of the, the main tools that uh, everyone has at their disposal here in the public school sector. Um, it's really there for your 401k plan. It acts in a lot of ways the same. Um, so there's significant tax benefits to saving into a 403b plan. You can get a tax deduction for the amount you put in. Um, the money then grows tax deferred as it invests. Um, the, what I was just referring to is a traditional 403b. There's also what's called a Roth 403b, which actually works the same way as a Roth IRA in the fact that the tax benefits are actually just flipped. So a Roth would go in after taxes and come out tax-free. The 403B would go in before taxes and get taxed on the way out. Um, a question I always get asked is which one is better? Um, you know, unfortunately, I would need to know exactly where tax brackets fall to be able to answer that question. Um, tax brackets fall in the future to be able to answer that question uh, effectively, but it's really good. And I always suggest people have some sort of combination of the two because you're going to get control. You're going to have uh, control over where you're taking money out in the future, depending on changes that might happen to tax brackets or, you know, your income in the future. Um, I know I'm coming up on time here, so I'm going to breeze through some of this, um, but there are some advantages, obviously, to having a 403B um, versus an IRA. Um, 403Bs have a lot higher contribution amount. You can contribute a significant amount more towards those than an IRA. Um, it doesn't matter how much money you're earning. You know, if you're in an IRA, you actually might not be able to contribute based on your income believe it or not. Um, so there are certain things to uh, look at to is, uh, determine what program makes the most sense. And that's something you always want to talk to your, your advisor about. Um, other options as well out there, um, you, know, you know, you obviously can contribute to both 403Bs and IRAs, and there's other types of programs, um, you know, for people who, you know, maybe do have a side business. We've, I've, you know, I've worked with a lot of principals and teachers who maybe do some business on the side. There's other accounts like what's called a SEP IRA to help people with that. Um, and what we do find a lot is people just maybe they've switched jobs or switched school districts over the years, and they have a lot of accounts that are that are, that are scattered. Um, you know, one one of the things that you'll want to do is just to you know a lot of times it's simpler just to have those in one spot and consolidate it into one account so we can kind of look at it from one uniform investment strategy and it makes it a little bit easier to manage. Um, again, there's some additional tax advantaged opportunities uh, as well. Um, these are just a, a couple of different ways, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip over this just for the time being. Um, so there's so many opportunities and so many options out there, and there's a lot we've discussed here today. So where do I start? Um, I think, number one, it's important just to kind of take a step back and assess where you're at. Um, assess your current picture. Again, first thing we want to make sure that we look at is protecting your loved ones in the form of making sure we have the right types of insurance in place, the right amounts of insurance in place um, in case something happens. Um, you know, look to ways to reduce debt, you know, to the extent it makes sense. You know, some debt, believe it or not, um, you know, actually makes sense to have. Um, it just depends on a number of factors there. Uh, pay yourself first, you know, even if, you know, you're, you're setting up an account and, you know, you're, you know, contributing $100 a paycheck. 
you know, that's a form of paying yourself first and making sure that that money goes to your future self before it might go to something of somewhat of an expense today. Um, you know, obviously it's, it's, you know, it's, it's good to work with a professional who, you know, has an, has experience working with people in this area. Um, and also can kind of look at it from a third party view and, and really, you know, take emotion out of it as much to the extent that we can. And, you know, obviously always reviewing and fine tuning your strategy as we know things change. So something that a professional will help you with is reviewing over time and making adjustments and, and tweaking the plan, um, you know, as time goes on, because we know life changes, you know, markets and economies change. So it's important to uh, review what your ultimate or your initial strategy is. So yeah, if you have not reviewed in a while, um, you know, this would be a pretty good time to do it. So with that, um, I want to thank everyone for listening. Um, I'm not sure if we have any questions, um, but uh, that's all I, that's all I had for people today. Hopefully this was, this was helpful. I'll turn it back over to you, Annika. Great. Thanks a lot, Nick. Um, it looks like we don't have any questions at this time. So if uh, everyone, if you you can go to, if you think of any questions later, you can go to the SANES website to contact your local EXA equitable representative. Um, thanks very much, Nick, and please stay healthy, everybody.